Hello learners, greetings of the day. I am Professor Kirti Kapoor. Today I am going to take up a story with you. This story is from the supplementary reader for class 12, Vistas. Chapter is 2 and the title of the story is The Tiger King. The story is written by Kaliki. Before we begin the story, let me tell you a little more about the author of the Tiger King. Kaliki is his pen name. The author's real name is Ramaswamy Ayyar Krishnamurti. He was born in pre-independence India in 1899 in Tamil Nadu and was a renowned writer, journalist, poet, critic and freedom fighter. His writings include three historical romances, five novels, ten novellas, several editorials and political writings, music and film reviews as well as over 120 short stories. What a prolific writer he was. In fact, the Indian Postal Service released a stamp in 1999 to commemorate his centenary you can look at the postage stamp. Now the story, The Tiger King. The story Tiger King is a satire on the rich and powerful kings of olden times. The story revolves around a king whose death at the hands of a tiger had been foretold by astrologers. When he was just born, as he desperately tries to reverse the fate spelled out for him. The author uses thinly veiled satire to make the reader laugh as well as realize the king's folly. The story, The Tiger King has five sections. As you can see in your books, you can open your books, you can read the chapter along with me because it's a good thing to read the chapter along with me. I am going to narrate the incidents to you and you can refer to your books. Now it has five sections. Section 1, Introduction and the Prophecy. Section 2, Young Prince and the Count of Tigers. Section 3, The King and the British. Section 4, The Marriage and the Reason Thereof. Section 5, The Hundredth Tiger. Let's look at Section 1. Please open your books. Page 8. Section 1 introduces us to the main characters and provides context for the action that follows. The Maharaja of Pratibandapuram is the hero of this story. He may be identified as His Highness, Jemedar, General, Khiledar, Major, Satta, Vyagra, Samhari, Maharaja Diraj, Viswa Bhuvana, Samrat, Sir Jilani, Jang Jang Bahadur, MAD, ACTC or CRCK. My God, what a name. However, many epithets, he may have preferred the Maharaja of Pratibandhapuram. Sir Jilani, Jang Jang Bahadur was also called Tiger King. Now, before I proceed with the story, I am going to read one question for you. Why was he known as the Tiger King? Why does he get that name? Now, while we are going through the story, keep this question in mind and we will discuss this question at the end of the story. Is that okay? Let's continue. The writer says that he has come forward to tell us why he came to be known as Tiger King. Who? the king and he intends to stand true to his mission. He has no desire to pretend to advance only to end in a strategic withdrawal. He will tell us the story come what may. Even the threat of a stuka bomber will not throw me off track. The stuka, if it likes can beat a hasty retreat from my story. Now let us understand what is a stuka? Bomber. The Stuka Bomber is one of the most famous 
German aircrafts of the Second World War. Clearly, the narrator likes to give a melodramatic account and build suspense. He says, the manner of his death is a matter of extraordinary interest. It can be revealed only at the end of the tale. The most fantastic aspect of his demise was that as soon as he was born, astrologers had foretold that one day the Tiger King would actually have to die. When Maharaja Jang Jang Bahadur heard the prediction after his birth, he had retorted, one who is born has to die someday. Death is something which is inevitable. Everyone was stunned to hear that a child born just 10 days ago could talk in such a manner. The king who was just 10 days old asked the astrologer about the manner of his death. The chief astrologer said that a tiger would be the cause of his death. The prince growled, let tigers beware. When the crown prince reached the age of 20, he took to hunting tigers to belie the prophecy. Now let's go back to the question. Why was he known as the Tiger King? Why does he get that name? Why does he get that name? Because there was a prophecy that he would be killed by a tiger. And he took to hunting. He started killing tigers when he was a young king. So therefore, this name was given to him. I hope section 1 is clear to you. Let us proceed with section 2. When you read the introduction, you must have wondered what kind of a childhood a royal infant whose death has been predicted might have had. Section 2 tells us just that no other miracle marked his childhood days. Apart from the event already described, Crown Prince Jang Jang Bahadur grew taller and stronger by the day. Let us know how. The boy drank the milk of an English cow, was brought up by an English nanny, tutored in English by an English man, saw nothing but English films, exactly as the Crown Princes of all the other Indian states did. So, what do you find in these lines? Hmm? The author is making fun. When he came of age at 20, the state which had been with the court of wards until then came into his hands. When he assumed the throne, the Maharaja was thrilled when he was successful in killing the first tiger. He sent for the state astrologer. The chief astrologer said, Your Majesty, may kill 99 tigers in exactly the same manner, but you must be very careful with the 100th tiger. So that was the prophecy that the 100th tiger is a danger to his life. The astrologer promised to tear up all his books on astrology and set fire to them if he killed the 100th tiger and proved the prophecy wrong. Let us see what happens till the end. Let's continue with the story. The Tiger King's ego was hurt at the astrologer's emphatic assertion and in order to prove him wrong, the Maharaja banned everyone else from hunting tigers in Pratibandha Puram. So that was his order. So I hope part 2 is clear. Part 2 is about his growing up. Then he takes up the kingdom and he starts killing the tigers to make the prophecy wrong. Let us move on to section 3. Section 3 tells us the impact of the Maharaja's diktat of tigers only being part of royal hunts in Pratibandapuram. A proclamation had been issued to the effect that if anyone dared to fling 
so much as a stone at a tiger, all his wealth and property would be confiscated. The Maharaja vowed he would attend to all other matters only after killing 100 tigers. Initially, the Maharaja seemed well set to realize his ambition, not that he didn't face any dangers. There were times when the bullet missed his mark, once a tiger leapt upon him and he fought the beast with all his bare hands, each time it was the Maharaja who won. So that was the kind of determination he had. Either with bullet or with hands, he wanted to kill the tigers. But do you think this is the right way? Only the hundredth tiger was the danger for him. Why kill any tiger? Let it be like this. Now let's move on. Let's see what happens in the story. If British officers would come for the game, game here means for hunting. He would not let them hunt. It's not that he was concerned about the ecological system. Only thing he only wanted to kill them for no reason. He refused them. He refused the British for going into the forest or hunting a tiger. He was, he did not give them the permission. He would say, I can organize any other hunt. You may go on a boar hunt. You may conduct a mouse hunt. You are ready for a mosquito hunt, but tiger hunt, that's impossible. So once again, observe the words that have been used by the author. You can go on a mosquito hunt mouse hunt, boar hunt, again he is making fun of them. So let us see what happens next. Because he prevented a British officer from fulfilling his desire, what was his desire? His desire was to go for hunting and he had stopped him. Now he was worried. The Maharaja stood in danger of losing his kingdom itself. The Maharaja and the Diwan. What is the meaning of the Diwan? A high-ranking court official is known as Diwan. So, the Maharaja and the Diwan held deliberations over the issue. Now, issue was not a simple one. It was a serious one. So, as a result, a telegram was dispatched to a famous British company of jewelers in Kolkata. In your book, in your textbook, it is written Calcutta. Earlier it was known as Calcutta, but now it is known as Kolkata. Send samples of, they had written in the telegram, send samples of expensive diamond rings of different designs. Some 50 rings arrived, okay. The Maharaja sent the whole lot to the British officer's good lady. Now this was his way of pleasing him. The king and the minister expected the Duraisani to choose one or two rings and send the rest back. Within no time at all, the Duraisani sent her reply, thank you very much for your gifts. What an irony, 50 rings were sent. They thought only two will be kept over there, but Duraisani kept all. Now, it was very difficult for them to say no. You must be wondering what is this word Durai Sani. Durai is a Tamil word which means leader. So, leader's wife Durai Sani. So, it is clear to you. But they could not ask them to send the rings back. In two days, a bill of 3 lakh of rupees came from the British jewelers. The Maharaja was happy that though he had lost 3 lakh of rupees, he had managed to retain his kingdom. So, it is clear to you this part. What does this part reveal? That means corruption was there at that time also. This means that you know these kings of the small states were keeping the British officers happy by giving them bribes by giving them gifts, 
So that was the situation over there. So once again the author is drawing our attention to this scene and he is making fun of it. So this part is clear to you. Let us move on to section 4. Section 4 continues to describe the Maharaja's obsession with finding the required number of tigers to kill. Do you remember the number? Yes, it is 100. One day the Maharaja sent for the Diwan. Diwan Sahib, aren't you aware of the fact that 30 tigers still remain to be shot down by this gun of mine? So this means how many has he already hunted down? He has 170. That is a large number, huge number. So sad. He asked brandishing his gun. Shuddering at the side of the gun, the Diwan cried out, Your Majesty, I am not a tiger. Which idiot would call you a tiger? No, I am not a gun. You are neither tiger nor gun. Diwan Sahib, I summoned you here for a different purpose altogether. I have decided to get married. Diwan Sahib, see I have quoted the exact words, the dialogues that were going on between the Maharaja and the Diwan. The Diwan was so nervous that he started blabbering. So he said, I have not called you for gun or the tiger. I have decided to get married. The Diwan began to babble even more. Your Majesty, I have two wives already. If I marry you, don't talk nonsense. Why should I marry you? What I want is a tiger. Your Majesty, please think it over. Your ancestors were married to the sword. If you like, marry the gun. A tiger king is more than enough for this state. The kingdom does not need a tiger queen as well. The Maharaja gave a loud crack of laughter. Aren't you laughing? We are all laughing at this. The author has given humorous pieces in every section. So you must have appreciated that the story is replete with humorous incidents. The Maharaja continues, I am not thinking of marrying either a tiger or a gun, but a girl from the ranks of human beings. First, you may draw up statistics of tiger populations in the different native states. Next, you may investigate if there is a girl I can marry in the royal family of a state with a large tiger population. Isn't it funny? The Maharaja wants to marry a girl who has a large population of tigers in her state. What a condition. He is not concerned about her education or anything else. So that is again a very funny part. So after marrying such a princess, they were able to find one. Whenever the Maharaja visited his father-in-law, he hunted tigers each time. Because he was thinking about the numbers all the time. He had already killed 70 and now he was killing more. This way he managed to kill 99 tigers but could not find the 100th tiger. Of course, the thought of hunting tigers whimsically and for pleasure is highly unfortunate. Now given the rate at which the number of tigers has gone down in India, their conservation should be prioritized at all costs. So many species have been brought to the brink of extinction by the indifference of human beings. That is why it is important that we remember at all times that this story is a piece of fiction and a satire. Please read your lesson carefully. Do the project, do the writing work. Thank you for being with us.